Hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. I'm gonna try and go through this as calmly as possible. I know I have a tendency to um, flare up and wave my arms around in videos. I've looked back at some of them and I'm like, what is going on? So, where we currently stand in the cryptocurrency space is completely uncharted territory. In that, the market normally uh, has not reacted as strong at events as we're currently seeing. That is to say, uh, we normally know that buying is going on in the cryptocurrency market. But now we're seeing something completely different and it's an entirely different entity in and of itself. With the massive levels of accumulation, and I'm going to try and not just focus on one entity here, because we normally in the last three months have only been hearing about BlackRock. It was initially BlackRock and the other eight companies who have Bitcoin ETFs. The narrative slightly shifted to grayscale because of grayscale selling, which is also slowing down. They're still selling. It did that cutoff thing again. Uh, grayscale is still selling. Not as much as they were before, but the outflows are still happening. And the inflows to the other ETFs are still taking place, depending on when you're looking at this video. Where we are price-wise is a little weird. Uh, because I personally believe that we should be well over $100,000 by now. And that is, and I mean, and I'll give it to you this way, that is just based off of metrics that we currently have of Bitcoin's network usage. The amount of people, the amount of new wallets, the amount of adoption, the amount of money flowing through the system, the trillions of dollars, the acquisition, the hoarding, the coins that have not moved. Based off of these numbers, we should be far higher in price. However, a large portion of what the market is are market makers and market players and whales who are trying to get you out of the market. Entirely different conversation, but it's 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 part of the game, if you will. This is just how uh, big markets are, especially as we are a trillion dollar plus market right now. The discussions around where Bitcoin's going to go by summertime are almost deafening at this point, uh, simply because it's a huge portion of what the news currently is. While there might be updates and upgrades and this layer two and this side chain, everyone's mainly focused on money right now. It's because, for those of you who missed videos like five or six videos ago, we are so far ahead price-wise that it's actually causing people to, and I want to say like speak out loud or say what they've been thinking for a while. So the price predictions that we're getting for Bitcoin are astronomical at this point. And I said it a couple of months ago as well. It felt a bit weird to say those numbers, like even in a video, simply because I know how other people are going to react to them when they hear them. We have a lot of new people in the space. We have a lot of skeptics in the space. We have people who've been in the cryptocurrency market for a while, have gone through multiple cycles, have seen what the market can do. And because of the 2020-2021 market, a lot of people, I don't want to use the term have lost faith, but it's kind of this, this thing. And I make sure to mention multiple times because I've also heard it in other spaces and things like that as well. 2020 and 2021 were literally unprecedented times and the market did not go as high as it was going to go because... You might not have been, you might be Superman and awesome and cool and amazing, but the rest of the world was terrified. People were losing their jobs, they were losing their homes, there were no new jobs to be had. There was barely any government assistance in a lot of places, mainly in the states that we're talking about. It was a very, very different time. People didn't have money to put into the market. People were taking everything out because they were like, I have to pay my rent that has gone up by 40%. There's a guy in the space 
he's surging in popularity once again. And I think it's mainly because I think he's talking a bit more honest now because a couple of years ago, there was a lot of hate against him because of 2020 and 2021. And I said in other videos before, what I think is interesting right now is that a lot of people are coming to the same conclusions. So before, in the past, whenever we had uh, cryptocurrency or more so Bitcoin price predictions, there was always a gigantic range between them. The lightly bearish to the mega ultra bulls as to where people thought prices were going to go. And we kind of just usually would fall somewhere in the middle. But where we are now is kind of all falling in the exact same line. So I don't, I don't have the names of all these people, but if you've been paying attention to the last, I want to say month or month and a half, a large portion of it once again has focused on price. We normally would not have crossed the previous all-time high for Bitcoin until nine months after the halving, that is to say January, end of January 2025 is normally when we would see the rocket beginning to rocket, as it were. And having happened so early, this is mainly mainly because of the news about accumulation. Even if we're just focusing on BlackRock, which is a shame, as I said in the last video, other companies are accumulating tens of thousands of Bitcoin literally every single week, every single day. There's a guy on a Twitter, um, they call him Mr. 100. It is a wallet that every day is accumulating 100 Bitcoin. The problem is that Mr. 100, some people are now calling him Mr. 300, Mr. 700, or Mr. 900. Can you guess why? It's because most days he's, accu he's, he's accumulating daily. It's not like every other day or once a week because most days now he's accumulating 300, 500, or 700, and 900 coins in one go daily. However, the news is only focused on BlackRock. Also a shame. When you have all these metrics and you slam all of them together and you really get the full, we're not even getting the full picture. We're getting the numbers that we are given that happen to enter into the news. This still isn't accounting for uh, the other wealthy people on the planet who we know are also buying and have been buying for a number of years who are doing it OTC, doing it over the counter. Uh, Plan B is back in the news because, and I'm actually glad as well, because his numbers are now matching everyone else's numbers. Uh, based off of his charts, he's talking about where the prices were before as far as over the course of a four-year period, where he said Bitcoin's price was going to go. That is to say, over the course of 2020 to 2024, he said the issue is, is that we are going to hit 50,000, but we're also going to go above 50,000. He uses 50 as like a lever because if you use the number 692148.3, like it, it gets a little messy. So he uses 50,000 as like an actual base level. His charts are now showing him that during this current cycle that we're in, and this is the same exact number from a, n a number of other analysts, and even his numbers are lightly conservative. He's saying that Bitcoin is going to go over half a million dollars during this cycle. And the thing about it is, is that usually there's like an overflow. So maybe you know, 540,000, 610, who knows exactly where it's going to go. But he's saying that we're going to hit that 500,000 during this cycle. The other crazy part, I mean, the, the craziest part is now that the numbers are beginning to make sense from what he said a long time ago and to what the other analysts are also saying as well. Kathy Wood was also recently in the news and she reshaped her numbers as well, where she said that she believed that by 2028, uh, Bitcoin, 2028, 2029, she was expecting like a $1 million Bitcoin. And I think she redid her numbers and said she's expecting, I think, a $3.3 million Bitcoin in that same exact time. The accumulation levels are far too strong for us not to reach these numbers just based off of like logical supply and demand. The supply is dwindling. And I've been saying this for a number of years. A lot of times I see other people mentioning the amount of Bitcoin on crypto exchanges and saying, well, there's still like a million Bitcoin left. And I'm like, there's a million 
I think it's 1.3 million Bitcoin that's available for 8 billion people. The problem is, is these companies are buying up thousands of Bitcoin every single day. And though the Bitcoin that's on those exchanges is not completely liquid. A lot of people have their coins on crypto exchanges with no intention of selling them. They simply just have them sitting there. So you can't assume that all these coins are, you know, up for grabs and up for taking. And, and, even, and even if they are, that's also still really scary because BlackRock in two and a half months accumulated 250,000 Bitcoin. In another two and a half, three months, do they have half a million Bitcoin? So the Bitcoin has to go somewhere and, and, and is going in the hands of, of, of rich people. According to his charts, he says that during this cycle, he's expecting us to go over 500,000 and then begin to settle. The settling won't be us going back to a 20,000 Bitcoin. It's somewhere around 300,000, if whatever, around there, according to numbers. But he says, by the time we enter the cycle for 2028 to 2032, Bitcoin then adds another zero. So his original number for 2020 to 2024 was a $50,000 Bitcoin. He said, this cycle, we're going to go over half a million dollars. That's adding a zero to the 50,000. He said, because of the exponential crunch in supply that we're going to witness, by 2028 cycle, we'll have a $5 million Bitcoin per coin. And then he says, <laughs> here's, the, here's, the, here's the, the issue, is that Bitcoin still isn't done then. If you've ever looked at Bitcoin's issuance chart, it's very difficult to say, Bitcoin's issuance chart and looked at the numbers after 2032, when the halving in 2032 happens, how few Bitcoin there actually is that comes out of the machine, you are currently able to buy that much Bitcoin for, I think, it's around 400 or 500 US dollars. It's, it's, it's I think, 700, 800,000 Satoshis. That's all that will come out of the machine in 2032, every time that a block is validated. So it's no longer the 25 Bitcoin or the 12.5 Bitcoin or the so-and-so. It will literally be fragments of a Bitcoin that end up coming out of the machine. Him, Kathy Wood, and a lot of other people, I think they're afraid to say this, but I think they all know exactly what this then implies. If every single cycle Bitcoin has added a zero, the implication is that by the time we actually get to 2036, 2040, when there's that, 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 that fragment that was coming out of the machine gets cut in half even more. And I can't go opposite, but, you know, it's basically dust coming out of the machine. Everyone's then fighting over the Bitcoin that already exists the same way that they're doing it right now. That would then equate to a $50 million Bitcoin. But as I've mentioned before in other videos, I don't think a lot of people are ready for that to happen. Not to say that it's not going to happen because they're not ready. I think the amount of sadness and anger from people who didn't buy Bitcoin will kind of overflow. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's kind of like you see how currently there are a lot of people, we see them everywhere. And what's this guy's name? Trevor Noah, a couple of months ago, was like, oh, I'm so sad I didn't buy any Bitcoin. Do you remember when he said that? For those of you who don't know, Trevor Noah said that on an interview, he was really sad that he didn't buy any Bitcoin and wishes that he had gotten an earlier. Bitcoin's price was $57,000. He can still get in. The issue is, is that when we hit 100K, a lot of people are going to say, ah, I wish I got in earlier, but I can get in at 100K. When we get to half a million, more people will pile into the market and say, I wish I got in at 100,000. But something psychological happens when Bitcoin goes over the valuation of a home. If one Bitcoin is worth more than a home or property, it becomes something a lot more to a lot of people. It becomes something that only the wealthy can hold or the wealthy possess. If Bitcoin hits a million dollars per coin, that FOMO kind of becomes, I think, sadness and anger that people get upset with themselves that they did not buy more at an earlier stage. I, I told you before, it's a very weird sentence that my friend said. Uh, he said it on Instagram. He said, uh, we buy Bitcoin at the price that we deserve. 
depending on how long you fought back, how long you've pushed, how long you told people you didn't want to buy Bitcoin, how terrible Bitcoin is, at some point we all get into the market. And the, the price that we bought it at or that we're buying it at is the price that we deserve to buy it. There will be people who don't, they don't get into the market until there's $1.4 million. They go, fine, okay, I'll buy some. But it, it'll hit them really hard. They remember seeing on TV that Bitcoin had crossed $20,000. Why didn't I buy any Bitcoin back then? So, yes, uh, the idea of exponential growth in this market is incredibly real. And what I think, what I think, what I think, last thought, that the world needs to see, I think the world needs to see a 100,000, got it, but also a half a million dollar Bitcoin. Because I think that will solidify it in a lot of people's minds that it's time to stop playing games and, and time to get into the market. But the timing is different for everyone. So you're here right now because this is when you got in. It sounds ridiculous, but it's true. I'd rather you be here now experiencing the growth as opposed to getting in in 2032 when all you can afford are fragments of fragments of fragments of Bitcoin. It's going to happen. I'm, I'm certain. I can, I can see it clear as day. There will be a lot of people who barely, barely have 100,000 Satoshis and they're going to be like content with, with, with the amount that they have because they'll have no choice. And then you have the people who own all the Bitcoin. They will be richer than anything in human history. Yeah, um, I do hope that you have all enjoyed. I know the videos are getting pretty intense, but you know, so is the news. So is the world. So is everything that's happening with this market. You can't ignore it. You can't sit there and pretend like you don't see all of this happening with Bitcoin. I mention all the time. I make daily videos on both channels. It's heavy accumulation. There's a huge amount of money entering this space and you can't sit there rolling your eyes and going, well, pff, let's see let's see what happens in a couple of years because I knew a lot of people who I no longer talked to who said the exact same thing. I had a lot of friends who kept on telling me either I was insane to be in this market or let's see in a couple of years where prices go down. They are super giddy, super giddy when prices go down and I've lost money. The moment the markets go back up, they're texting me. How do I buy? How do I get in? I don't respond to them anymore. Go find out yourself. I've tried to help you for as long as I've had these channels. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly... Be talking to you all soon. See you.